Oh, wait, you're listening. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. <coughs> you're listening, listening to Radio Lab. For kids! Radio Lab. From WNYC. See? Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. Imagine your eyeballs grow lots of hair. And you suddenly get really good at math. Trigonometry in particular. It's the study of angles, triangles and stuff. But instead of showing off that math with a pen and paper. You show it off. By dancing. You shake it to the left, hey. You shake it to the right, hey. Then you waggle, 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 and point your body in the perfect angle to show your siblings how to find flowers. You have become a honeybee. But not just any honeybee. One of the overlooked honeybees. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> now is when I make you sing the theme song. Mm. Terrestrials, terrestrials, we are not the worst, we are the <laughs> best reels. Best reels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrestrials is a show where we uncover the strangeness waiting right here on Earth. I am your host, Lulu Miller, joined as always by my song bud. Hey, hey. <laughs> Alan. Buzzing with excitement. And this season, we are looking at creatures that are usually... Overlooked. And today's a very special guest is a voice you might recognize from past Terrestrials. That's right. Bug guy Sammy Ramsey has joined the <laughs> Terrestrials team as our official... Bug correspondent. Hi, Sammy. Good to be back. So the story Sammy has brought us today is about overlooked honeybees. Picture a bunch of bees you might not have ever seen before. Some of them are huge and some of them are tiny and some of them are red and some of them are shiny. And when their wings are moving, all of those colors just seem to shift and shimmer around. But this story is also about a superhero of sorts. Who I'm going to call... Man who notices overlooked things... Underneath his cape and tights is Sammy. It's Sammy. Sammy, are you okay with me calling you man who notices overlooked things? Um, yes. (laughs) (laughs) He's a good sport. And I'm calling him man who notices overlooked things because... My eye is drawn to things that people don't pay a lot of attention to. In his science, his life, really, he has learned again and again that when you zero in on the things that no one's paying attention to... You find the discoveries. Just watch. The year is 2006, and farmers all over the United States are opening their beehives to find them... empty. It's weird to not hear that characteristic... Some folks have referred to it as the silence of the bees. Ooh. Others referred to it as colony collapse disorder. And it was really scary because honeybees, of course, are pollinators. Which means as they drink from flowers, they spread pollen, which triggers plants to grow everything from peaches to pumpkins to cabbages to coffee to nuts and avocado. And Ugh. Imagine a life with no ice cream. They do not pollinate cows, Sammy. They pollinate the food that we feed to the cows. Oh. So a bunch of bees just disappearing is really frightening. And this is where... Man who notices overlooked things! ...arrives on the scene. Because a few years into the silence of the bees, Sammy joins the ranks of scientists trying to figure out why the bees are disappearing. Is it a new disease? Is it because of pesticides? Maybe it's the cell phones. It was not the cell phones. But some people wondered, could it be due to this parasite called Varroa destructor? What is this parasite? What does it look like? Like a weird, tiny little mite. Then people thought it was feeding on the bees' blood. But... just wasn't so sure. So he started looking closely at the stuff no one wanted to look at. The mites poop. (laughs) And he noticed... It had these strange crystals. Ooh. And as he gazed deeper into those crystals, he realized the mites were feeding on the bees' livers. And so he and his sneaky team of scientists started concocting a potion they could feed to the Varroa destructors that would make it so they can't have babies, which means... 
no new adult Varroa destructors to attack the bees. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> Woohoo! So that's it. Our bees are safe now, and I can enjoy my coffee and ice cream forevermore in peace. <laughs> I wish. Um, but sadly, Varroa is not the only threat to bees. Oh. There are a bunch of other parasites out there. So, how do you fight those? Well, this brings us to the overlooked honeybees. Sammy explained that all of the honeybees that exist in North America are all one species, Apis mellifera. And so much of the attention, by North American scientists anyway, the attempts to save them, the research, has been focused on those black and yellow buzzers you know and love. Or don't love. Ah, bee! But Sammy, being... Man who notices overlooked things! He thought... What if I looked at the other species of honeybees? Those little red ones and giant furry ones and shiny black ones. All of whom happen to live clustered in one region of the world, Southeast Asia. Huh. So, but why? Why look at them to keep our bees safe? Because they've lived in forests in Thailand, India, Bangladesh for millions of years. Way longer than our little bees have been around. And over those millions of years, all kinds of parasites have popped up and attacked them. Huh. Meaning these overlooked bees, their bodies are like crystal balls. Because they show what parasites could come attack our honeybees in the future. And if scientists can get a head start on studying those potential enemies, those parasites, well, if they do ever come to the U.S., we'll be much better prepared to fight them off. Bingo. Wow. Okay, and then as I understand it, you are headed out in just like a few days to head deep into the jungle to try to catch some of these overlooked bees? (laughs) Is that right? So I'm leaving in seven days. Okay. Where are you going? The heart of the jungle of Bangladesh. And we'll be staying on a houseboat so we can go deep into the little rivers of the jungle to find some hives. Now, looking for, like, a hive in the wild sounds really hard, like maybe even harder than a needle in a haystack. (laughs) How do you find a wild beehive? Every single honeybee species needs to visit flowers. Hmm. And so we're going to grab bees at flowers. Then we attach a radio tracker, like a little belt around their waist. (laughs) Like a tiny, teensy (laughs) little bee belt? Teeny, teeny, tiny little bee belt with a little beacon that'll actually connect to our (gasps) cell phones and show us on a map where they land. Which is their hive? Correct. (laughs) Wow, go technology. I agree. As you're getting ready for the trip, anything you are nervous about that might be lying in wait? Any snakes? Uh, There there are snakes and Bengal tigers. (gasps) They are huge. They can eat a person. So, um, if you don't hear anything back from me by the end of February, please send a search party to Luke. Can you do that? Okay, I promise, but I don't know. And with that, we say goodbye to our dear, brave friend, Sammy. (laughs) Good luck. Thank you. Terrestrials and hopefully Sammy will be back in a moment. Terrestrials is back. I've got a bright green mosquito net. I can hear all the sounds of crickets chirping. And we are on a houseboat deep in the jungle of Bangladesh with Sammy. So at night, things get pretty quiet. You can hear fish moving around, jumping out of the water. It's his first night. Geckos here and there. Tomorrow, he and his team will head deep into the jungle to search for the overlooked honeybees that might hold the key to keeping our bees safe. But for now... I can let the sound of the waves and water just kind of rock me to sleep. The next morning... Let's do this! Woo! You ready, team? The team assembles. We're ready! ready. There's Babalal... The jungle expert who grew up in these parts. Mowgli, the translator. And with radio trackers and binoculars, there's Madison, Shin, Chris, Rico, and Amanda. Yeah, lots of us buzzing around. <laughs> and the plan, as... Man who notices overlooked things! ...has designed it, is to scan the riverbanks from a little speedboat. When we're in this speedboat, we've been looking from the outside of the forest in, trying to see if we can find blooming flowers. 
the bright orange and white star-shaped flowers of mangrove trees, which will lure the bees so Sammy can snag them, pop on the fancy radio gear, and follow them to the hives. So they look. Hmm. And look. Hmm. And they see. Otters. Wild boar. Crabs. But, uh, no flowers. Yeah. And after two days of seeing no orange and white blossoms in the thick green, well, Sammy was starting to accept. See, we, we, um, we got there a little too early. Wait, what do you mean? The flowers weren't blooming yet, Lulu. Oh, they just, I messed up big. That night on the houseboat, man who notices overlooked things curled up under his mosquito net. I thought to myself, oh, Sammy, you blew it, buddy. You blew it. He thought about all the people who had believed in him, invested money in him. That's the worst part. Just makes me feel sad and burdensome. And he was realizing... Maybe it's time to just cut our losses and go back early. But the next morning, he had an idea. If they couldn't find flowers to lure the bees... What if we made flowers to lure the bees? So they got to work brewing up a kind of smoothie they hoped would smell like a mangrove flower's nectar. Crushing up a bunch of fruit and adding in some honey. Crucial question. Do bees eat honey? (laughs) Bees love to eat honey. They're very attracted to it. They do. What? Yes. Wait, is that analogous to eating your own earwax or spit? No. So it's not something that their body produces. It isn't. No. We interrupt this programming to bring you a pressing what is honey digression. So honey doesn't come out of bees? No, it doesn't come out of bees. (laughs) What is honey? A lot of people seem to think this. A lot of people call it bee vomit. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Alan, did you know honey was not secreted by bees? I kind of always thought it was bee vomit. But is it just food gathered from flowers? Ah. Correct. So they fly to a flower. Okay. And the flower has nectar in it. It's like juice. Mm -hmm. Okay. They'll suck up this nectar and they put it in something in this little sack in their stomach. Like a little backpack inside the tummy? Yeah. So then they fly it back to the colony. Okay. And they empty the backpack full of nectar into the comb. And they'll fan their wings. (laughs) Really? Yeah. They create this draft and it causes a lot of the water to actually evaporate out of the nectar. (laughs) What a witchy little ritual. We dance and fan. Dance and fan around a cauldron of nectar as fast as we can. Dance and fan, dance and fan, turning juice into honey with the wave of our hands. Yeah. Well, technically with our wings. High five, hive. Buzz, buzz, buzz. (laughs) That's how you get your honey. I truly did not know that till this moment. (laughs) That concludes our What is Honey digression report. Back to your story. So you're on the ground Mm -hmm. trying to set traps and bait bees with honey. Mm -hmm. And is that working? No. No, you weren't even. We got a bunch of flies. (laughs) We got fruit flies. (laughs) I'm sorry. I don't don't mean to laugh at your misfortune. (laughs) How dare you, Lulu? (laughs) Okay. Okay. So (laughs) you're making your potion (laughs) not working, getting covered in flies. Yep. And no bees. Not seeing any bees. Even if flies hadn't been covering his eyes. Man who notices overlooked things. Wasn't sure where to look next. He was out of ideas for the next pathway or technique to explore. I think this one's over for you, buddy. And it was in that moment when Sammy finally admitted he didn't have the answer inside his head that he could finally see where it might be. (laughs) Babalal, the jungle expert. Babulal was kind of the leader of this four-man team that was helping us out. He was a local from the Munda community. They're this really cool tribe that's been living in the jungle for hundreds of years. And they just seem to know everything about the area. Uh, Many of them make their living fishing and collecting honey from the giant honeybees. The most giant honeybee on the planet, in fact, and one of the most dangerous animals in Asia because of how they work together to swarm predators with their giant stingers. It's a species called Apis dorsata that Babalal hadn't overlooked at all. You are ready to catch some dorsata? Yeah, thank you. We will get some, no problem. Now, Babalal didn't have any radio trackers or tiny bee belts, but he had something arguably even better. 
what is sometimes called traditional ecological knowledge, this deep understanding of creatures and plants that comes from living alongside them and watching them for generations. Now, knowledge like this has a history of itself being overlooked by Western scientists or dismissed as unscientific. But Sammy, well, he was excited to learn from Babalal. It was part of why he had invited him to be part of the team to begin with. He just had this huge smile. <laughs> nah, I don't want to Super confident. Okay, so how was he going to find them? He said, you just have to watch the bees. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> we would love to watch the bees, but none have shown up for us. Mm-hmm. He said, that's because they don't fly through the forest. It's a much better idea to fly above the trees So they're up above the canopy? Exactly. How am I going to get up there? Yeah. Well, Babalal just started climbing a mangrove tree. And I got to say, he got to the top pretty quick. Like, it was was just, there was no, it didn't seem like he needed to, like, psych himself up for it. If I needed to climb a tree, I just need y'all to know it's going to be a minute. And then Babalal just watched. The air, the world above the canopy, until he saw a bee. And he told Sammy now to find the hive. You have to notice which shape they make as they're flying. If the bees are flying around in this sort of S kind of pattern, well, they're flying back and forth and back and forth because they're looking for food. Oh, they're like swooping back and forth, scanning for flowers? Precisely. They're they're probably flying away from home if they're doing that. But if the bees are flying straight as an arrow, Mm -hmm. making a beeline, Mm -hmm. Uh (laughs) that's how you know that they're going home. Wow, so he is like fluent in their choreography. Exactly. And after watching just a few bees make a beeline in the same direction, Babalal told Sammy, It's easy. You just follow them home. So they head off in the motorboat in the direction that the bees pointed. And a little while later, Oh, and it looks like we're docking here. Hop off where Babalal tells them to. This forest was a different kind of place. When we stepped off the boat, you'd sink up to your knee in mud. And then you trudge into the forest, and the mud is still sucking on your boots every time you lift them. It was a place Sammy would have never intentionally looked. Ah. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Lots of thorns. All right, mud's getting deeper down here, guys. There are tons of roots. Oh, watch out. There's uh, these spikes right here. And critters. Crabs running around at our feet. It made it super hard to get through. ooh that got me. Mud skippers, these little fish that can breathe air and are bouncing around on the mud. But that was the direction the bees had secretly pointed. Be very careful with these roots, y'all. And because Babalal knew how to understand them, that was the direction he kept leading the team. Until... Wow. Oh, my goodness. A hive. Look at them. Hanging from a tree full of giant honeybees. They are dancing on the comb, which is really cool. They're beautiful. (laughs) Do you have a plastic bag for the bees? He will be moving it away with his hand and he can just brush some into it. So, Babalal, he scrambles up this tree, this time with a smoker to calm the bees. 10, I said. 10 would be great. 20? 20 be even better. Bishta, bishta diem. And up there in that tree with his bare hands, Babalal scoops about 20 of these hard-to-find bees into a bag for Sammy. Yeah, that's plenty. You can drop it. And Sammy stood there for a moment, looking at these crystal balls in his hands. Wow. Some of which could hold the key. The wriggling, parasite-shaped key to keeping our bees safe. Isn't it gorgeous? And then he gazed up at the canopy he would have never thought to look above without Babalal. I looked up for the first time and saw these tangled branches of all of these trees, spiders that have made these beautiful webs. And it hit him that the best way to keep finding the overlooked things to keep finding the discoveries that will keep our bees safe 
was to, well, behave a little bit more like them. Bees have taken over the world because their capacity to work together is unparalleled. These tiny creatures make millions of gallons of honey a year. They swarm to take down predators a hundred times their size and flap their wings in unison to air condition their hives on scorching hot days. And that kind of stuff only works with serious teamwork. They're better together. It's good, it's good. Kogon Babu. <laughs> Thanks to Babalal, Sammy and the team are back in the lab with new bees to inspect and have already identified a tiny red parasite that could come for our bees someday. The mite called the tropolalaps mite, the tropy mite for short. Which means they've got a huge head start on figuring out how to stop it. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am going to let you go so you and your team can go get busy, busy oh, on goodness. that. <laughs> okay. I will work on my puns. You work on vanquishing bee predators. <laughs> I'm going to work as hard as a honeybee showing the hive where the honey's at. Brush that pollen off your shoulder, honeybee. It's time to dance. Shake, shake it to the left. Shake it to the right. Shake, shake it to the left. Shake, shake it to it the, the right. All the bees in the hive. Go on and brush, brush that, that pollen off. off. <laughs> brush that pollen <laughs> off. Hey. Brush that pollen hey. off. Stretch your wings out. And you make that buzzing, buzzing sound. Buzz, 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 buzz. Buzzing, buzzing sound. Do the math, honey bee. Spin your body round. Spin your body round. Spin your body round. Go to work. Point the way to all the food you found. Go to work. You break it down. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm getting hungry now. Shake, shake it to the left. Shake it to the right. Shake, shake it for the bees in your little beehive. I know you dance when you feel the power. <laughs> you got the whole hive looking for flowers. I know. Sato is showing off your fly choreography. Trigonometry from Bangladesh to India and Singapore. More like Singapore. Don't you get too close? Are we sting you more? <laughs> shake, shake it to the left. Shake, shake it to the right. right. Shake, shake it for the bees in your little beehive. I know you dance when you feel the power. You got the whole hive looking for flowers. <laughs> Alan Gofinski with vocals by Dr. Sammy Ramsey. And that is it. There is nothing else cool about it. <laughs> What's that? Excuse me. I have a question. Me too. Me three. Me four. The Badgers. Listeners with badgering questions for the expert. Are you ready? Absolutely. Hi, my name's Leona, and I am six. Hi, my name is Felix, and I am eight. Are all bees vegetarians? And do some eat meat? Ooh, okay. So we love to say that bees are just vegetarian wasps. Huh. But there's a group of bees called the vulture bees. Okay. They do scavenge dead bodies of things, often entering through the eye socket and just... Ew! Yeah. And they'll eat, like, flesh? Yeah. They even make a honey-like substance from this regurgitated... I want to... D- yeah. I want to regurgitate. <laughs> Wait, they make like a corpse honey? Yeah. Ew. Hi, my name is Alex and I'm seven years old. Why don't we use bees to guard money or gold in bank vaults? Humans have used bees as guard dogs before in some parts of the world, including um, regions in Africa. Really? Where when they're trying to guard their crops from animals like elephants that might want to eat their crops, they will put a bunch of bee colonies on wired fences. And when the elephant pushes against the wire, it will shake the bee colony. The (gasps) bees will come out and the elephant will run away. How smart! Hi, I'm Elizabeth Tartakovsky. I'm 24 years old and I'm an Olympic fencer. My question is, do all bees die after they sting you? No. The queen has what's called a straight stinger. So she can just stick it in and pull it back out. 
The queens only really use their stingers to fight other queens. Bees sting each other? They do. It's like fencing? Booty fencing? Booty. <laughs> Booty fencing is <laughs> the best phrase that I've heard all week. Hi, my name is Dooney. I have a question. What's your question? Do bees sleep? Are you asking, do bees sleep? Yep. Oh, do they sleep? Yes, they do. And the adorableness. Hmm. A lot of bees will actually sleep inside of flowers. If you open a squash plant's flowers, really early in the morning, you'll often find squash bees yeah. sleeping in the flower, and uh -huh. they often sleep holding hands with another squash bee. No. It's the cutest no. thing in the world. Are you serious? It's so cute. I can't. <laughs> okay. I think we got to leave it there with two sleeping bees holding hands in a yellow squash blossom. Terrestrials was created by me, Lulu Miller, with WNYC Studios. This episode was produced by Alan Gafinski, Mira Bertwin-Tonic, Joe Plord, and me with help from Sammy Ranzi, Rico Hernandez, Amanda Gann, Madison Sankovitz, Chris Bork, and Shin Arun Rukshisai. The Terrestrials team also includes Anna Gonzalez, Tanya Chala, Sarah Sambach, and Valentina Powers with fact-checking by Diane Kelly. Big special thanks this episode to Babal Almunda and Rubayat Monster Mowgli, both of whom, by the way, will be credited on any scientific papers that come out of the work they did with Sammy in Bangladesh. Support for Terrestrials is provided by the Simons Foundation, the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation, the Calliopeia Foundation, and the John Templeton Foundation. Thank you! And finally, if you have a topic, a story, a creature, a person that you think has been overlooked who we should cover, shoot us an email at T-E-R-R-E-S-T-R-I-A-L-S at W-N-Y-C dot org. <laughs> and that'll do for today. Thank you so much for listening. See you in a couple spins of this dirty old planet of ours. Bye.